I mean, I think he's standing up for himself. At the end of the day, uh, a lot has transpired over the course of what the past three years, uh, four years. And I think he's just out of boiling point. Do you think it's kind of understandable, a good year, everything's kind of going his way, and they're still bringing up highlights from his Wizards days and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think. I, I, it's understandable. I, I understand where it's coming from. None of the highlights were from this year, right? No, in the not, most recent. Not that I think. You, you think Drill's already has been getting from you guys, from Kerr and from KD and publicly and everything the last couple so. days? I think so. I've been in a situation like that, and I know I appreciate it. You know, so, um, I definitely think he appreciates you know, the support and just to know that someone has your back. Steve uh, called it the most insane uh, basketball schedule he's seen in the NBA. I mean, have you even looked at it and seen what your uh, travel itinerary is the next like two weeks? No. Um, he said something about it, but I didn't really pay attention to it. I know we got a couple back-to-backs or something. You guys got five East Coast and then one back here in Minnesota. Oh, that's see, so that's the one I've been thinking about is that one like yeah. Minnesota didn't like the San Antonio, then yeah, and it's after one home game. After. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. Uh, but you know, we'll figure it out. Do you think you might get some rest? I mean, some guy I know Kevin sitting in there with a little hand thing. I mean, are you expecting hand thing? Maybe it's a big one. Yeah, bring some news to me if you want. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying. You said a little hand thing, like hands can't hurt. I'm just saying, do you expect guys to get some rest during the rest of the season? Our number one goal is in the regular season is always, you know, take home home court advantage throughout the playoffs. And we still got a little ways to go, you know, to do that. And in doing that, you just don't want to give away games. You know, you got to lock that down. Obviously, the Spurs have been playing great all season, and they're right there. You know, four games behind isn't a lot. Especially when we go there twice, I think on back to backs, if I'm not mistaken. It's two tough games. So, um, those, those games alone can cause huge swings. So, we got to take care of business. And, you know, if you're able to create some separation, then it's probably a conversation you have. Dream on your basketball court. With your build, you know, what made you think that you could be this good passer, a guy with the floor vision? I've just never. Follow the guideline, you know. It's, I think people create whatever guideline they want and then expect you to follow them. And, and they say that's right. I've never really agreed with that in my life, you know. I think there's a different way of going about a lot of things than the typical way. And I kind of approach the game of basketball the same way. There's a lot of different ways to play this game, you know, and a lot of different ways to be effective. And not just the typical way that everyone says, oh, he's this size, he's supposed to do that. You know, or, um, he weighs this much, he's supposed to do that. You know, whatever the situation is, that's how it's always going. And, you know, my uncle used to always teach me how to play every position. You know, when I got to, when I got to playing AAU with the family, my AAU coach Speedy told me, hey, man, you got to learn how to, you know, have to, you have to, do everything. You have to shoot, you have to dribble, you have to pass. You can't just be a center. You know, I used to play center. You can't just be a center, you're not big enough. And so it's kind of yes. it's always been that way. Bro. I just did some everything. You ever have to talk your way and say, hey coach, I can do that. You know, don't don't limit me. Um I think starting off is always that way. It was that way in college. It was that way in high school and then my high school coach figured out, oh, you can do a lot more. You let you do it. Is that way in college, then coaches will figure it out, I'll do a lot more and let me do it. And the same thing is here. You know, it's just about growing, building, um, playing your role, and then when the opportunity comes, be ready to jump into it and try to expand. You're not the only one kind of defy the like Kevin and even Steph really don't necessarily fit those roles. Is that part of the success of this team, do you think? Is that you, are you guys a little harder to game plan because I think it's we are a little harder to game plan because it's not traditional. You know, everything <coughs> all the schemes you played your entire life now you see or some coaches have done their entire career, yeah. you see them completely changing their schemes and everything they believe in. Because it's not the traditional way of playing, you know, so 
it's becoming more traditional because more people are trying to do it now. <laughs> but um, it wasn't, you know, what everyone was doing. So I think, you know, that does bring some success with it. Five years ago, say, or what position does he play? Not you, just anybody. What, what is he? What is he? Now you talk to a scout and they'll say, like, is he, can he play? Do you think that maybe people like you and your teammates can kind of, kind of force people to look at basketball players instead of just... I think so. And that was always my goal, you know, as a player. They used to ask me in pre-draft, in those meetings, like, what position do you play? And I'll tell them, I'm, I don't play a position. I play basketball. You, know, you put me on the floor, I'll figure out something to get done. You know, and they used to ask me, like, are you a three? And my answer was always, no, I'm not a three. Because you take away some of the things I can do as a four man if you just make me a three. And if you make me a four, you take away some of the things I can do as a three. So just don't limit me. Just let me play. Put me on the four, I'll figure it out. Quadruple yeah. double without scoring. Uh, I'm sorry. Always beautiful. Do you think teams like to hear that answer from you? Or do you think no, some they of hated them, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's probably why I was the 35th pick. But it all worked out. You should have shut up, got more money, and then. <laughs> nah. Can't do that. That more money could have landed me being in a bad situation being out the NBA. So. I was going to say that quadruple double without. without I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's all good. Yeah. Um, it's a testament to two things. One, your basketball IQ has gone off the charts, and it was already off the charts. And there's a self sacrifice to that. And I was wondering if you think the, the blend of Durant and the way other players have sacrificed some of their points, and it's, is it all part of the culture of that? It's definitely a part of the culture. You know, if you want to win, sometimes you just have to sacrifice certain things. And, and you know, it's not about how good you are as a player or, or you are or aren't as a player. Do you feel more tuned in than you did, is. let's say, last year at this time? Yeah, that's the first question or the second one? <laughs> Both. <laughs> second right. one, second one. All right. It's just about you know, feeling the basketball IQ. All right, give me the second one again. Do you feel more <laughs> tuned in? Do you feel more aware of the I, I, geometry? I feel like I've grown a lot. You know, um, I think the, the more comfortable you get with something, the game kind of just slow down. You know, it's like it's moving in slow motion because you got it all figured out. I definitely think so. Um, because you start to see so many different coverages and you start to figure more things out. That way, to, like last year, a lot of different things were being thrown at us. You know, all of a sudden, team is switching everything and we've never seen that so now you're trying to figure that out. We're kind of at the point now where we've pretty much seen everything so when people throw different stuff at us it's just like clockwork. You just pick up on it because it's not the first time that you've seen it so I definitely think you know that helps you feel like you're in a better place. Have a crazy road stretch coming up. Do you ever find yourself kind of disoriented when you're on a crazy road stretch like that? Like you forget what day of the week it is or anything like that? Forget what day of the week it is. Forget what hotel room, what room number I'm in. Uh, I'll go to the room from the last hotel all the time. Um, wake up and not realize what city you're in. How to get up and look around for a minute. It's all a part of it. Um, but nonetheless, you figure it out. You know that's the life in the NBA. Uh, and you can't just go bomb the games. You got to go try to win the game. So. It, it gets tough, definitely. Um, sometimes you feel a little out of rhythm because you don't have as much gym time as you would if you're at home. All that stuff comes into effect, but you try to keep it as normal as possible, but it's never that. You just have to deal with it and figure it out. Have you ever been in a body that is or like missed in practice? Or no, practice? no, no, no. Um, Eric Housen does a great job of making sure we know wherever we need to be <laughs> on time, step for step. With a, with a trip like this, do you have to like schedule before you? Yeah, because there'll be a lot of numbers on there, like bags at this time, first bus at this time, second bus, if you want to get on the early buses at this time, flight at this time, optional practice at this time. So you have to you know, really pay attention and weave through it. There's some emojis in there now. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Great win, guys, with smiley faces, all type of stuff. So you definitely have to weave through it. But it's, you know, you know, see. The stuff with uh, more of the annual nitpick at the Warriors. And sort of, I don't or, know. Uh, seems like that's become a thing now, hasn't it? Always, I was always taught if someone isn't hating on you, you ain't doing something right. So that's how I look at it. What do they got against you guys? You're nice and quiet. We're good. <laughs> We're good. 
and they hate that. Get <laughs> picked on in the team that was beat up, beat on for so long. You know, then you hit the bully back down like that. You know, when when they were used to coming in here and just suck. Uh, it's the Warriors checking off as a win, and all of a sudden you're almost checking it off as a loss. I don't like that. <laughs> you guys are having too much fun. We do have fun, but that, it's basketball. It's supposed to be fun. I think we get condemned a lot for having fun. But you play better when you're happy. Who me or us? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Javale's blanket on the road trip coming up? One day. <laughs> One day. Is it spontaneous or you got some plan? <laughs> Who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Not me. Definitely not me. There's a lot of funny guys in that locker room. But I'm not one of them. Thanks, guys.